Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg and I am here today to talk about three books that are getting added to my reading list for the end of 2022. Can you believe we're coming up on the end of 2022 already? It's wild to think about, but there we are. So these are the new selections for the LGBTQ in translation read-along. I have copies of them on order. I do not have them with me, but I wanted to film this video now to give people time to order them for themselves if they would like to uh, make sure they read along with us. I will also have information for the Discord server where we have our chats in the description box down below. I have really loved this group of people that we have in there, so I encourage you to join if you would like. The conversations that we have had about the books that we have read this year, which are, of course, LGBTQ books in translation, it's really elevated my experience of these books and what they are doing and what they are about and uh, what the LGBTQ experience is like in other parts of the world, and I've really enjoyed doing it. This is the brainchild of Jen the Librarian. I will have a link to her channel in the description box down below. She came up with the idea of having a read-along focused around LGBTQ books in translation. And I loved the idea so much that I offered my services if she ever needed help at any point. And uh, at one earlier point in the year, and then now she asked me if I would kind of step in and help co-host. And uh, that's what I'm doing now. So these are going to be selections for October, November, and December. We were originally only going to pick books for October and November, but here's what happened. First of all, that leaves kind of one month just lying at the end of the year. And the other thing is I asked people in the group for suggestions since they are a really intelligent group of people who are very widely read and they were very helpful in picking books for the last two months of the read-along. So I wanted to get some suggestions from them. They had a lot of really great ones. And the process of narrowing it down was very difficult. And I'd say if you join the Discord server, please check out the other suggestions. You really couldn't do wrong with picking any of those as well. But largely based on the topic of availability and things like that, I narrowed it down to three books. And I was talking to Jen about those three books and we decided, why don't we just pick three books? And then that way we'll have one for each of the remaining months of the year and we don't have to worry about picking a, sort of a book for December alone. So that's what we're doing. We will have plans for next year soon and they will be announced. So stay tuned for that. But this has been a really rewarding experience and I think we have picked three very interesting books. So one thing I really wanted to do as we worked our way through this year is make sure we hit all the different parts of the world and we had not covered Africa yet. So these all tie back to Africa in some way. Two of them are by African authors and set in Africa. One is by an African author and set in Paris. So let's talk about the three books. I will talk about what they are about. I'll have links to them on bookshop.org down below, but depending where you are, they are available on Blackwell's or through your ind local independent bookstore. I actually ordered them from Montana Book Company. That is where I will be getting them, but it's just too soon for them to be here. The first one is a bit of a special case, and that is La Bastarda by Trifonia Malibia Obono and translated by Lawrence Shamil. Because that one, when I ordered it from Montana Book Company, their distributor does not have it in stock at the moment, but their distributor is expecting a shipment of it soon. So it should not take too long to get it. And when they first told me that their, that their distributor did not have it in stock, I almost just dropped it and pivoted to a different book. But when they said that they should be getting some in stock really quickly, I decided to go with it, especially since if it doesn't get here until like October, that's fine because it'll still be within the period of uh, November and December. We don't have a dedicated book for each month. It's a very casual read along. I should also say that up front. Um, you can kind of read things when you want. August and September, there was a bit of a procedure because one of the books that we chose was specifically for Women in Translation Month, which is August. So that kind of naturally tied in, but you can really read the books when you want to at your own pace. And hopefully with this time period, you have enough time to get all three in if you would like, or just focus on the one that you want to focus on. Again, it's a very casual group. And um, the first one sounded really interesting. This is probably the one that I gravitated toward 
the fastest of the three. It's also really short. It is 112 pages, according to bookshop.org. Here is the plot description that they have. A teenage orphan's quest of self-discovery in Equatorial Guinea and a unique contribution to LGBTQ literature. That's from Kirkus Reviews. Here's the blurb about the book. The first novel by an Equatorial Guinean woman to be translated into English, La Bastarda is the story of the orphaned teen Como, who lives under the watchful eye of her grandmother and dreams of finding her father. Forbidden from seeking him out, she enlists the help of other village outcasts, her gay uncle, and a gang of mysterious girls reveling in their so-called indecency. Drawn into their illicit trysts, Okomo finds herself falling in love with their leader and rebelling against the rigid norms of Fang culture. I've seen some really interesting reviews of it. Sean the Book Maniac actually had a review of it that popped up in my Google search results. When I was looking up information about it, I'll put a link to his video in the description box down below as well if you want more information about this book in particular. It sounds fascinating. Again, it's a short book. So if you want to do like novellas in November, it would be a really good fit for that. Uh, just a nice short book that you could probably fit in to your reading life in the remaining months of the year, if you would like. The next one is A Country for Dying by Abdel Ataya and translated by Emma Ramadan. This is an exquisite novel of North Africans in Paris by one of the most original and necessary voices in world literature. So this is the one by an African author that is set in Paris, in case you couldn't tell. Paris, summer 2010. Zahira is 40 years old, Moroccan, a prostitute, traumatized by her father's suicide decades prior and in love with a man who no longer loves her. Zanuba, Zahira's friend and protege, formerly known as Aziz, prepares for gender confirmation surgery and reflects on the reoccurring trauma of loss, including the loss of her pre-transition male persona. Motaba is a gay Iranian revolutionary who, having fled to Paris, seeks refuge with Zahira for the month of Ramadan. Meanwhile, Alal, Zahira's first love back in Morocco, travels to Paris to find Zahira. Through swirling perpendicular narratives, A Country for Dying follows the inner lives of emigrants as they contend with the space between their dreams and their realities. A schism of post-colonial world where, as Tyre writes, so many people find themselves in the same situation. It is our destiny to pay with our bodies for our people's future. Sounds really interesting. I've seen a lot of really great feedback on the writing of Abdel Ataya. The book has a blurb on the cover from Colm Tabin, if that means anything to you. I have not read Colm Tabin yet, but I really want to. So hopefully that will be a good sign of things to come. Really looking forward to this book as well. The final selection for October, November, and December for the LGBTQ in translation read-along is In the Spider's Room by Mohabed Abdelnabi and translated by Jonathan Wright. Here is the description of this book. A sensitive and courageous account of life as a gay man in Egypt. Hani was out for an evening stroll near Cairo's Tahrir Square when a heavy hand landed on his shoulder. An informant had identified him and he was thrown into the back of a police truck. There began a seven-month nightmare as he was swept up along with 50 other men in the infamous Queen Boat Affair that targeted Egypt's gay community. Finally free but traumatized into speechlessness, Hani writes down the events of his life his first sexual desires, his relationship with his mother, his marriage of convenience, and his passion for Abdel Aziz, the only man he ever truly loved. In the Spider's Room is a bold tale of sexuality and persecution in contemporary Egypt. And I've also seen some great reviews of that one. I'm really looking forward to all three of these books. I think they will be fascinating. They should all be readily available. Again, you can find them through your local independent bookstore. That's what I did. You can order them through bookshop.org. I will have the links to that site down below if you'd like to check out more information or just you know price them out and decide which ones you would like to get. I don't know how available they will be in your local library. My local library does not have them, but I think that's probably predominantly a product of me just being in Montana and they don't have a really great selection of LGBTQ in translation books. Hopefully, if you live in or near a bigger city, you will have better luck with your library. If not, the books should be out there enough that you can find them pretty easily. Again, they are available on Blackwells, and I'm sure you can find them through other sites. But those are the avenues that I like to take. So those are the ones that I'm going to encourage you to take as well. So there you have it. Those are the three books that we selected to close out 
this year in the LGBTQ in translation read along. These are going immediately on my reading list. I hope they go on yours and I am very much looking forward to reading them with the group again. It is a fantastic group of people who have really elevated and deepened my understanding of the LGBTQ in translation books that we have read so far and I look forward to continuing that experience next year once we have details of that finalized. And again, a big thank you to Jen the Librarian for coming up with this idea in the first place, making it a reality, and allowing me to sort of just ride along on her coattails on this one. So those are your books. Let me know if you will be ordering them and participating in the read-along. And uh, again, all the Discord information will be down below. As always, I really appreciate your time, and I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.